Hello again everybody. Getting into slightly more familiar territory for me now. You know, breaking 100, breaking 90. It's a bit weird when you've done that a long time ago and you're a single figure golfer. Now the best aid to becoming a single figure golfer is time. You need the time. You need the time for lessons. You need the time for practice and to play. You know, I, I'm knocking it around here four times a week, maybe five, but some of those sessions are going to be practice, going on the practice ground or going on the range. I much prefer the practice ground because it's off grass, the range is off mats and sometimes the mats and the balls are somewhat poor. See, I got friends who were a 12 handicap 20 years ago and they're still a 12 handicap. And that's not a criticism, that's just a simple fact of time. You know, they get home from work at about six o'clock and if they're gonna get changed and go up the golf club, then it's, it's only it's seven in the evening and they can't be bothered because it isn't worth the journey. So time is so, so important to get into single figures. And yes, I know there are super talented guys who start as a junior and by the time they're 19 they're at a three handicap and they get down to scratch by the time they're 23 or whatever but those are few and far between the rest of us have to work at it we have to hit fairway we have to hit green we have to chip and putt I'm going to mention the clubs in the bag now from the seven iron down these are precision clubs these are clubs for hitting the right direction the right distance. We all know a guy who's taking a 52 from 135 yards and swinging out of his socks and he's hitting thins and fats and he's missing greens and for some reason his ego says hit your 52 or your 54. They're never going to be any good because they can't hit target on a regular basis. If we look at the top end of the bag, driver, three wood, five wood, even your three iron if you carry one, these are for hitting fairway. They hit fairway, you need a smooth, rhythmical, rhythmic, yeah, you, you need a swing like that. You don't want to be hitting the cover off the ball. You know, we all know a guy whose handicap is 14 and he's four over par for three, four, I need to cut this and do it again. He's four over par for the vast majority of the golf course and then he drops 10 shots in three holes because he's trying to knock the cover off the ball with the driver all the time you know i'm not going to be able to help that guy get down until he sees the light himself and the light is you need a smooth rhythmical well-timed swing and a hit fairway your driver is for setting up the golf hole and you don't set up the golf hole by missing 30 yards to the right. Now nowhere in that did I say slow. My mate Bendy, he plays off four and he hits at about 280, 290 and if it's downhill and downwind then he'll hit it over 300. He doesn't have a slow swing speed at all. He's a big, strong lad who's 25, maybe 30 years younger than me. So he paces it. But it is a lovely rhythm. rhythm. I'm going to stop using this word. It's a lovely, well-timed, smooth golf swing. If he was to swing out of his shoes, he wouldn't be hitting fairway and he wouldn't be off four. He'd be off eight or nine. And so that leaves us the mid-irons. What's the mid-irons for? Well, the mid-irons are for hitting the middle of a green on the fly, knowing your yardage and hitting the right club to get to the middle of the green. You know, you don't go chasing flags with a four iron or a five iron unless you're absolutely on it. And let's face it, how many times are you absolutely on it in a year? One week, two weeks in the middle of summer when you can do no wrong? Typical green is 30 yards long and 18 yards wide. And you need to be able to hit that tennis court size green with your four iron, your five iron, your six, even your three iron. You know, you should 
be able to hit that target most of the time and two putt from there. And of course getting to single figures and staying there means having uh, a wallet full of get out of jail free cards. Being able to pitch, chip and putt when you're in the merd. And the final point is get over here and warm up before you play. You'd be surprised how many good golfers don't warm up and put the first ball, OB, and then you're right behind the eight ball before you started. And this has gone on for five and a half minutes, so this introduction is quite long, but I think it's worth saying. See you on the tee. Well, the warm-up did not go well. I'm feeling pretty stiff and clunky this morning. So I'm going with three wood. Just going to back foot it a little bit. Squeeze out a low fade. At least that's a shot I can play when I'm stiff. Got 148 to the middle of the green, flag is on the front. So I'm going to ignore the flag and just take plenty of club. Didn't hit that very well, so it's come up short. So all in all, it's worked out okay. Well, I'm glad I took plenty of club, because if I'd hit the eight iron poorly, I'd be another 10 yards short of this. So, first putt, just try and find out how fast the greens are today. Take me par and get out. Well, even though I'm off the back tee, I'm sticking with my normal three wood here. Just want to turn it over a little bit. Get it going right to left. And that's a great strike, but it's just a little bit tight. Yeah, more than just a little bit tight. Right, low hook with the 7 iron. I think that's my best bet. And I haven't done that at all. In fact, I just not noticed that Basher is underneath the tree there and I almost brained him. Now the worst thing I can do here is try and make a par. If that sounds a silly thing, I got to accept that this ball isn't going to stop and I'm going to be taking a bogey. If I try to make a par by flopping that so it only just dribbles on the green, well, chances are I'll leave it in the rough. Then I got a second awkward chip. Probably heading towards a double. Flag is at the back today. And that's the bigger part of the green, so the sensible thing is actually to take enough club and fire it all the way to the back of the green. But I hit this one right off the bottom and I've dunked it in the bunker. Well, the soft ground has left me a long way back. So I'm just going for the middle of the green here. Absolutely no heroics whatsoever. Aim it left and hit the fade with the slope of the ground. Hit the green, take me two putts, get out of there. I 
Just remember, the driver isn't for beating the life out of. It's for setting up the rest of the golf hole. So I'm just going to try and hit a little draw here. And, oh, bugger. Part of being single figures is being able to recover and recover correctly. So you've got to look at the window of opportunity and whether you have the skill set to do it. If you don't, then you've got to take the safer route to the right. But if you can, then you do. Okay, so we're taking a bogey on stroke one. It's going to happen most of the time, really, when you think about it on the hard holes. So just take it on the chin and move on. Now, this is what I mean about short irons being finesse clubs I could try and thrash the 9 iron but it's much easier to a soft 8 iron with a little feather fade into the flag it's much more reliable and you hit it much closer to the hole too Well, number eight has been giving me a spot of bother recently. I keep hitting it up the right. So this time I'm going to make sure I'm going to get up the left. Oh, that's a bit too far up the left. Straight into recovery mode. Now this is a five iron, close face, low runner. It's a shot I can play. I'm not sure what to advise if this isn't a shot you can play. There doesn't seem to be any other safe route out. Now I've got the five iron fade. Got to hit this one low. And we've done just that. Well, I've hacked my way up this hole. Yeah, that happens to everybody, even if you're single figures or not. Still, got a chance. Oh, lip out! I'm on a little downslope here and I'm in two minds what club to take. Could be a five, could be a six. I'm going with a five. <laughs> 